What's going on guys, my name is Arrow and in today's video I'm showcasing my build of the league Rage Stacking Perforate Berserker. Let's go. The core of this build makes use of the Void Forge Infernal Sword. The idea behind the sword is that you have a small amount of physical damage built into the sword, but you get 700% of that weapon damage as damage of a random element with each time you attack. It also gives you some AoE, some life, and then generic shock for all of your elemental damage. So you can achieve pretty big shocks on enemies. You also don't deal any non-elemental damage, so it wipes out your fizz damage that you do and you can't do any chaos. The downside of this sword is that you do pretty low base physical damage. I think it's 213 on like a perfect rolled Void Forge. So if you can add physical damage to the sword, it's going to give you 700% of that as a random element. Now, you can solve this in a number of ways. You can get flat physical damage on jewels or different support gems, but we decided to solve this in a way that would maximize the use of the Void Forge. That is where the Forbidden Shaco comes in. We have a level 33 Rage built into our Forbidden Shaco. So the Rage Support Gem gives base physical damage for 10 Rage, and it also gives some flat physical damage just for having the gem equipped. It also gives you Rage Generation, which is really nice. And uh, we have 90 total Rage based on the tree and some of the gear that we're using. So at level 20, you get four to seven physical damage per 10 rage and an additional 39 to 72 physical damage. So in total, the rage gem at level 20 would give you approximately 80 to 130 physical damage. When you juice that up to high levels, it gives you an absurd amount more physical damage. At level 33, which is what we have on our helmet, you get 11 to 21 flat physical damage per 10 rage and an additional 111 to 205. Multiply that by our 90 Rage, and you have hundreds of Flat Fizz getting added to this weapon, and then 700% of that added as damage of a random extra element. That is a massive, massive amount of damage. So how do we solve the fact that we are doing three different elements? Crystallized Omniscience. Now, Crystallized Omniscience has fallen a little bit out of favor. Uh, the price has come down substantially from previous leagues. People just aren't really using it as much anymore, which means the gear for it is a little cheaper. The, uh, the amulet itself is cheaper, and it's just more widely available. This amulet perfectly synergizes with something like a Void Forge, which forces you into tri Ellie. So you, you combine together huge penetration of all three types, the Orioth's End Flask, which gives you a random element explosion, and we are penning massive amounts of damage and having massive explosions that also pen damage, and it is just a perfect combination. So let's get into the gear and talk about how this build actually functions. So let's start with the sword. Now, I think I might own the best Void Forge on the server. It's got perfect rolled, increased fizz, and increased attack speed built in as uh, corruption implicits. And it also has a, a, a perfect attack speed roll. You do not need a weapon this good. It actually doesn't add that much to get the increased physical damage because we get so little from our weapon and most of it comes from the Rage Gem that the increased physical damage is not very important. I would definitely target a, a high attack speed roll and if you can afford it to get an attack speed implicit. I did not pay very much for this. I bought it earlier in the league and it's just been kind of sitting in my inventory until I figured out how to use it. But definitely focus on attack speed and not physical damage. Uh, next, we'll talk about the Shaco. Perforate plus two spikes, you gotta get it. So what I would recommend doing is buying a helmet that has rage on it, a high level rage, um, and then getting it enchanted by a lab runner. 
Usually they will charge you, depending on the time in the league, somewhere between one and five divines, uh, depending on the on the availability of what you're looking for. Something like Perforate Plus Two is gonna be on the cheaper end. After that, the next thing that you wanna get on this helmet is just anything that will help you at all. Post combat happens to be a really strong one, but I would actually recommend that you instead try to get a 35 rage because it's just more physical damage and then whatever for the next one. It could be inspiration, it could be melee physical damage. Anything that helps the build is fine. You can actually play this build and do almost as much damage with only a level 35 rage or a level 33 rage. A sixth link is not mandatory. I think this adds somewhere like 25% damage to have the, uh, the other support. So if you had just a 35 rage and no other support, it would actually only be like 18 or 19 percent less damage than what i'm doing and i'm achieving uh, hundreds of millions of damage with this build so you absolutely can and maybe even should play this build with a just a rage support obviously in the amulet slot crystallize omniscience uh nothing too exciting here our rings very very straightforward you want uh attributes you want chaos res where you can get it and then life these are very easy to craft you just get a fractured base which is going to cost you a couple divines and then hit it with essences until you have try uh try stats lock the suffixes and hit it, hit it with a veiled chaos orb you want to block mana and then you can almost certainly unveil life like a 95 percent chance or something uh, a quick note on the minus mana cost here we are running divergent inspiration you actually if you run my exact setup you don't want minus seven on both rings because then your perforate will cost zero mana and inspiration no longer functions. You don't get the charges if you don't use mana. So I actually have it on six and seven. Uh, having these minus mana costs is super nice because none of our skills cost any mana. We have 46 total. We could get by with 10. Uh, the most expensive thing we have is our Enduring Cry, six mana once every eight seconds. And with perforate being at one, it does not matter how high your attack speed gets. You will never run out of mana. Next, we'll talk about these boots. Uh, these are pretty cool. The idea behind this is just like stats and, and chaos res move speed for the explicits. For the implicits, we are running some, some very, very powerful mods. Enduring Cry cooldown recovery rate is very underrated. While the initial buff is up on Enduring Cry, you have additional physical damage reduction per endurance charges. We have, I think, five of those. Uh, so that's really nice. And then that falls off and that lasts, you know, there's a few seconds where you don't have that uh, additional buff of Enduring Cry. When it comes off of cooldown, you use it again and you get a massive amount of life regen. So every six, seven seconds, you just get a couple thousand life back. And I find that in really difficult fights, uh, that can be super useful if you're doing 80% deli and things like that. The other part of this is using Brittle Ground. Now on bosses, this gives you a ton of crit chance you just run underneath the boss, and for six seconds, we have Brittle applied to that boss. I prefer the one that says when a unique enemy is in your presence, because you just don't need this unless you're doing pinnacles. And even then, you don't need it, as you saw from, from the clips at the beginning of the video. But if you have, let's say, a worse Shaco and a worse Void Forge, and you have less Omni because your rings are worse, you may find that having this Brittle Ground really pushes you over the edge to get that extra damage so you can kill the bosses before they phase. Next, we have the Bear's Girdle. This belt is just fantastic. It is uh, max rage, which is a ton of damage for us. It's increased percent fizz damage per rage, which is super nice. And then uh, we were able to get for pretty cheap uh, increased stats as an implicit. Otherwise, this is like a 1C belt if you don't get the implicit. I think I paid like 100C for it with the, with the stats. Lastly, we have the gloves. We have some armor, some accuracy. You're gonna to need to get a little bit of that on your build. You can have, kind of play around whether you wanna get it on a ring or on your gloves. And then the implicits are interesting. So unique enemy is your presence. We get more attack speed. Again, I prefer to have the unique enemy mods if it's not a mandatory stat because it just pretty much just makes it so your bossing is stronger. This build does not need help uh, when there are no uniques around, I promise you that. And then the other interesting thing on here we have is Fizz Conversion. So the, one of the problems with Void Forge is that we have all this physical damage that gets essentially deleted because we get Fizz as extra of a random element, but we don't convert it. So we have all this physical damage that just gets wiped away because we're not allowed to deal any non-elemental damage. 
So anytime you can get some conversion, which we get some on the tree as well, uh, we make now we now get to make use of that physical damage all the time. So it's just a nice bonus. I you can even do the one that's when a pinnacle boss is is nearby, you get even more physical damage converted. Quickly, we forgot to talk about the chest. I elevated the uh, attack crit. That's I don't want to say it's mandatory, but it's really really strong because we don't get a lot of crit in this build. Uh, and then I also elevated plus one int gems uh, and got increased intelligence. The increased intelligence is nice. It's just a boost for Omni. And I thought we would need it for the Enlightened, and then it turned out that we didn't. We didn't actually end up needing the plus one uh, for Omni. So, or sorry, the plus one for Enlighten. So you don't have to elevate your increased intelligence. Basically what I did here was I, I combined the attack crit and the increased intelligence. I hit stun and block recovery, of course. Uh, and then I locked the suffixes and I tried to get percent life and I didn't get it. I reforged caster to get additional curse and then I tried to ashling to get percent life and I didn't get it. And I just said screw it. So this is a super scuff chest, but this is what we have. For our flasks, uh, we have Aureus End, which gives us explosions. We don't actually use the elemental res. Uh, so we're just using this for the explosions and it's very, very nice. Uh, Bottle Faith, this is really just for bossing. Uh, we get a Granite Flask with Curse Reduction, some Crit, Movement Speed, and Armor. Nothing too exciting on the rest of our flasks. I want to quickly talk about an alternate gear set that I put together. Uh, I attempted Ubers with it. I'm terrible at Ubers. It can do them with this. It's much, much tankier and your damage is way lower. It requires a lot more ramp time. I really just didn't prefer it. I don't like doing Uber fights, but I always feel obligated to talk about them because if I don't, someone in the comments will say, can this do Ubers? Um, you probably can. I hate them. I'm not trying them. Uh, but I did put together this alternate set and I did take down an Uber or two with this. But I'll briefly talk about what I did. Storm Shroud to make you ailment immune combined with uh, the boot mod of 60% chance to be avoid being shocked, and then an Abyssal Jewel that gives you more chance to avoid being shocked. So we ditch the Omni for this setup. We go uh, for a Lore Weave combined with Eternal Damnation. We got just a regular Bear's Girdle. And our boots and gloves, we got rid of our stats for just resistances uh, and some other stats that, that would help. We switch to Tesalio Cleansing Water. This gives us Fizz taken as fire, so a little bit more Fizz damage reduction, increased life recovery rate, and 100 fire res. We actually need the fire res because it's hard to get all of the uh, resistances that we need with this setup. And then our rings are just more things that are useful. Uh, we drop all the stats for the most part and we get resistances. I did not prefer this setup, but it is available if you want something tankier than what we have here. Uh, I know some people just prefer to make tankier builds. So this, uh, you can just kind of look at all these gear pieces and, and build around it if you want to. This uh, Progenesis, I would recommend using uh, over Orioth's End for bossing if you find that you can't insta-phase them if your gear isn't quite as good as mine, but I didn't even use it for the boss fights because it just, I never got hit. Lastly, we'll talk about our glove swap. So the glove swap is some tech that we uh, discovered that allows us to get all of our rage very quickly before a boss fight. So the Calm Spirit gloves, essentially the way they work is you put them on, you start generating rage, and you start degening. You get your Enduring Cry, that actually gives you a bunch of life regen, which will increase the amount of rage that you get. So then you switch back to your regular gloves, you hit your Enduring Cry again, it almost is timed perfectly, and then you go fight the boss. It's super easy to do. Uh, it's not mandatory, but it's the difference between pretty much guaranteed killing a boss instantly or having to actually do the mechanics. Uh, this build can totally do the mechanics. I just would rather go into a pinnacle boss. Come on. Come on. Riley, come on. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello time. Hello. You want to help make the video? Oh, thank you. Everyone say hi to Riley. Okay. Down. Good girl. You don't need the attack crit on these. They don't do anything um, because you're not actually wearing the gloves. These I just had these. Okay, so let's go through the gems. So in our, uh, I guess our main six link, uh, we have Phantasmal Perforate. Uh, using Phantasmal at less than 20% means that you get additional spikes uh, when you've changed stance recently, but it doesn't create any fewer spikes, which is usually the downside of Phantasmal Perforate. So just keep that at 19% uh, and you'll get an additional spike 
when you change between Sand Stance, which looks like this, the big AoE, and Blood Stance, which is a very small AoE. So you have to be pretty much point blank, which for close combat is actually pretty good. Then we use Awakened Melee Physical Damage, which gives us Intimidate and more damage. We use Divergent Multi-Strike uh, because it gives you some attack speed. You can get Awakened Multi-Strike, it's just really expensive. Uh, and lastly, Divergent Inspiration helps us get our mana cost super, super low. In our chest, we have our six link aura setup, uh, where we have uh, Vitality, Blood and Sand, Herald of Ash, and Enlighten, Determination, and Herald of Purity. We have a six link here in our uh, sword. It doesn't actually have to be six linked. So we have uh, an Ancestral War Chief and Ancestral Protector linked to Culling Strike and multiple totems. And then we just have a Blood Rage and Enduring Cry in here because we need to put them somewhere. In the gloves, we have a Leap Slam. You do not need this to be linked to faster attacks because we get so much attack speed on this build that you couldn't even tell the difference. I tried it out, it didn't matter. Uh, we have a Castman Damage Taken Molten Shell, and then our Berserk Gem we have here. We don't even have quality on this, oh boy. What a dummy. In our boots, we have a Arcanist Brand setup, which is Elemental Weakness and Assassin's Mark. Those are our, our curses. It doesn't really matter you don't need to use these except for the, the tankiest things in the game. Um, I actually think that a lot of the footage you saw is without me even using our marks in our in our curse. I have it on spacebar and I forget to use it all the time. That's how much damage we have. So uh, we also have precision in here, which is necessary. But yeah, the uh, the damage on this build is so bananas that I forget to use my curses. Quickly about the Relic, this was from another build, so the point blank doesn't do anything for us. It's just the crit multi for attack damage. You can use a lot of things here. Uh, attack speed is good. Any sort of generic damage is good. Rage generation, additional rage generation makes you ramp faster. That's nice. Uh, it pretty much doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to make this build in a way that it didn't require a Relic, so this can go on to next league. Uh, so this is just a little boost in damage. All right, we'll uh, talk about the Ascendancy. So we are, the beauty of going Berserker and, and taking five nodes is that you can buy whatever the cheapest of these three uh, notables are. Blitz, uh, Rite of Ruin, and Aspect of Carnage. You can take any of those on the Forbidden Flesh and Flame. For me, the cheapest was Rite of Ruin. I was only a couple Divines. So we are pathing to Aspect of Carnage. This is pretty much the mandatory setup for the damage version. Uh, Aspect of, Aspect of Carnage is just too much damage. 40% more damage is like one of the biggest damage sources you can get anywhere in the tree. So this is just great if you don't mind the increased damage taken. We never really get hit on this build, so it didn't it didn't bother me at all. Uh, Flawless Savagery, just crit, crit multi, and physical damage. And then attack speed stuff from Blitz. The rage stuff, of course, mandatory for a rage stacker. So we won't get too much into those, but these are really, really strong. So as far as the tree goes, we basically are taking life, crit multi, we're getting rage where, where we can. We get some additional uh, max res, so we're at 80, 78, and 78. Uh, we get some armor or a cluster jewel. We take a large that has increased effect and flat stats. These can be expensive and tough to craft, but you can get one that's a little bit worse for very cheap or just craft your own for very cheap. We take fortify down here. This is not mandatory. It just made me feel tankier. Uh, for like the really, really high intensity maps, uh, but you really don't need it because we're killing pinnacles instantly. And while mapping, you're never really in danger. So you could you could get more damage here, but again, you don't really need that. So it kind of got to the point where I had so much damage that I just started looking around going, what can I get for quality of life? Um, the Lethal Pride, really nice. You can get things like uh, Intimidate, which we already have, so we don't need it anymore. Um, multi, regen, you can get double damage, you can get uh, you can get strength, which I actually don't have anywhere. But then this also gives you uh, flat strength on all these nodes, here. so just more on me. And that's pretty much it for the tree. This is undoubtedly my build of the league. I had so much fun playing this. It absolutely crushes maps. It insta-deletes pinnacles. If you want to try Ubers with it, go ahead. Your problem, not mine. Um, but it was just an absolute blast. Uh, so, so much fun to play. If you do play this build, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and, and give me a like down below. Also, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. We have a lot of fun over there. We are all, always testing out new sorts of wacky builds like this, and we just have a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. As always, take care.